guys. Welcome to the Lean to the Left podcast, where we focus on progressive politics and the key social issues of our time. Now, with the election fast approaching, our focus today will be on politics and the race between convicted felon Donald J. Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris, a former prosecutor. Our guest is Jamar Jabari, support, who supports the Party for Socialism and Liberation and who first appeared on our podcast in November 2021 when he discussed his hopes for social revolution in the United States. Jabari, who subscribes to the idea that capitalism should be replaced with full-fledged socialism in the United States, is a passionate community organizer and committed to pushing for sweeping governmental policies that will benefit the average working person rather than the well-to-do. In our initial interview, Jabari said both the Democratic and Republican parties simply sell out to powerful corporate interests, but agreed that Democratic policies and actions generally are preferred over the Republicans. I'm glad he thinks that. Anyway, (laughs) he also hosts the Jabari VOC podcast, and he's going to tell us about some rather aggressive media activities that he's involved in right now. Jamar, thanks for joining us today on Lean to the Left. I appreciate it, pal. Thank you for having me. Yeah. If I could just talk, it'd be really good. Anyway, what's your analysis of the presidential race today, Jamar? I got to tell you, it will be interesting to see what the outcome is, because to tell you the truth, looking at the polling and especially at the swing states, it's, yeah. it, it looks very neck and neck. For the Democratic side, the blue, the, the people that are, are on the blue side, I think they have a, I think they have a lot more hope for a Harris election because compared to the polling between Biden and Trump was like, let's just say he was the front runner. Honestly, he was definitely the front runner. But with Harris, it's not like she's like going to win by a landslide, but you can see it's going to be a very close race. Mm-hmm. They just, I think, was it Montana? I believe. Please, people, please fact check me when you hear this. I believe it's Montana where they just released that there, there's a Democratic race going on in the Senate. And it looks like the Republican is going to win where they have where Democrats have 51 seats out of the 100 seats. Mm-hmm. So it looks like that they're, that Trump is looking to push in that state as well, too, to try to turn it fully red. Mm-hmm. New York is also on Trump's target. Trump is also targeting Philadelphia, which is interesting about Philadelphia. Is it, is it Philadelphia or New Jersey? I, how am I getting my states mixed up today? Actually, Jamar, he's humping Pennsylvania really strong. Pennsylvania, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and Pennsylvania apparently yeah. is the state that will choose who's president. Is yeah. what, so it's going after Penn, Pennsylvania very aggressively. And like I said, but, I don't know what's going to happen. It's a neck and neck race yeah. that we're looking at right Harris, now. Harris is going after Pennsylvania real strong, too. Oh, yeah? I, I haven't looked into that yet. Yeah, Obama w- was a speaker in Pittsburgh at a rally for her. I have comments on that, by the way, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. I, I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah, I uh, got comments. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's just get into that. Let me just ask you, I had a question about that. Obama wondered during his speech if uh, Trump had ever changed a tire or a poopy diaper. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I don't think he I don't think he've done any of those because he's a rich, very wealthy man. He was born into wealth. I don't think he understands that. It's sad how the working class on the right kind of thinks they can relate to this man. But it is what it is at this point. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It's just amazing. It's hard to it's hard to understand how they could identify with the guy that he's in love with gold in every way, shape or form. Right. And, and he's trying to sell a hundred dollar Bible with his name all over it. He's trying to sell what did Obama say? A thousand dollar watch. All this crap he's trying to monetize his golden sneakers. What do you yep. think about those golden sneakers, Jamar? You you, you guys, you're African American. I always thought African American like high top shoes. So yeah, they are very popular in our community. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're going to buy them? You're going to buy those Trump shoes? 
No, I'm very more interested in the Kyrie's and the Jalen Browns that are about to come out. They they look pretty cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So I, what I did what did you want to Trump tell me? Huh? I haven't I haven't seen the brother wear Trump shoes yet, and thank God I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> no one's gonna buy that. Jordan is the best seller, and he 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 hasn't been in basketball for almost 30 years now and he's still selling sneakers yeah that's really amazing it really is a story about how his mom told the shoe company what they were going to do in terms of michael jordan's share of the money for selling those shoes to me that was just amazing she pretty much just said this is how it's going to be or it's not going to be at all and they bought into it and the result yeah. is he's a very wealthy man Partially because of that, right? Yeah, he's a billionaire. Yeah. I don't know if he's solely off the shoes, but the shoes are a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I w when it comes to Obama, I was talking about this earlier at the job, and I was I also made a post about it on Facebook. I wish Obama would show his face when it's time to listen to our Black community, okay. because I was very struck by his words that he gave to, the, it's a video going around on, on X. I was very struck by his words that he gave towards the uh, the university students there, the black university students in particular, where he oh. called out black men for not supporting uh, Kamala Harris. And he right. said that black men were very much big supporters of his campaign and is part of the reason why he won. Right. Now, there's two inconsistencies with that. Right. One, Harris is a cop. And she wasn't very popular when she first ran. Yeah. So it's very odd to assume that people are going to just change their mindset about her just because she has to save the race because Biden wasn't ready, wasn't ready to continue. And to call out black men saying that we were pivotal, pivotal in, in Obama's winning. Now, I was too young to remember Obama's, I, I'm not too young, I wasn't old enough to vote okay. uh, during Obama's first term. I okay. voted for him on the second term when I was old enough to vote. Obama knows, damn, it was not the black community that was a huge reason why he won. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of supporters, but we are the minority in this country. When you look back into the voting records, when they, you know, do the demographics and all this stuff, it uh -huh. was white women that were the huge reason why Obama won his first election. Okay, white women came out harder than any other de demographic and voted Obama in. It wasn't uh -huh. the black community. And, and mathematically, of course, that's not going to be the case, regardless. <laughs> yeah. It, but it, to like basically lecture us in, in, in into a bullying way, saying, "Oh, you guys need to support her and all this stuff like that." That's just not how you're going to garner votes. I realize that he only comes out to lecture. If mm -hmm. he would be like Martin Luther King or Malcolm X, he would come into the communities, talk to us, have a conversation, invest more. You're worth a half a billion dollars. First of mm -hmm. all, doing mm -hmm. Trump. You, 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 yeah, he has. He doesn't have as much money as Trump, but he's close to having yeah. as much money as Trump, especially with the media company that he's doing, where he mm -hmm. just dropped a movie called "Leave the World Behind" and mm -hmm. on Netflix, and he has other Netflix specials. I, I believe he had a podcast as well too. He's a very wealthy man, yeah, and he comes off as being untouched when he lectures black students and black men like. I, I really was not I was not happy with his remarks at all. Your comments surprised me. They really do. Um, I did. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you if you feel like the black vote would put her over the top. But oh. the, the, the question, that question is superficial anyway, because there is no such thing as a homogeneous black vote, I don't think. Um, We're only 13 percent of the country and not. All of us are registered to vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about black women? Now, yes, Do you think they'll women, support Harris? I know. So I, I know just off of my talking and dealings with black women, regardless, I'm a, I'm a communist at heart. 
and a lot of black communists share the same thoughts that I share that we're just going to vote for a, a working class presidential candidate, whether that be Cornell West or whether that be Claudia Dela Cruz or whether that be Jill Stein again. But for the Democratic supporting black voters, I've seen a lot of support of black women just talking to them of Kamala. But yeah. I also seen the contrast as well, too, with a lot of black women that especially. So the difference is that ma- majority of the black women that I'm seeing that is pro Kamala Harris are already historically Democratic supporters. Right. The community organizing black women. Like I, I would name some heavyweights here in Connecticut. Shouts out to Karen. She's a huge supporter of she's a huge organizer that do a lot of work for black women and disabled people in standing up a police brutality she's a part of power up kamor who has kamor corner who's been on the oprah show and she does a lot of great work up in hartford she's she, these these powerful women that that are like her like black, a lot of black women who are like them they are not supporting harris um they are actually voting for third party Don't they understand, though? And don't you understand that if you vote for these third party people, you're actually voting to put Trump in? Because really, don't you think it's neck and neck, Bob? You you, you know, I I appreciate the pushback, but it is neck and neck race. And regardless of who wins, we are still going to have the same issues and we're still going to be organizing against police brutality still organizing against the inflation, especially with the electric. We have a petition drive going on. And this is a, dem- deep, mind you, this is a democratic state that we're yeah. in Connecticut. Right. And, the Democrat, and the Democrats don't do well when it, when it comes to, just like the Republicans, don't get me wrong, just like the Republicans, they don't do well in Connecticut with the housing crisis, the housing keep going up, more people are, there was a study in New Haven alone that 50% are on patient to paycheck and yeah. they are in a red line of becoming homeless because of how much the housing prices goes up. And we have a Democratic mayor here, and he's more invested in Yale and, and more developing more unaffordable properties here. So it, the Democrats here locally has to do so much more to, to bring the trust back, just like federal. These are community leaders, and they're going to tell them exactly how they feel. And it's up. And, and I want people to vote, and, and, and if they decide to vote Democrat, I'm cool with that. But the issue is that the reason why we're voting third party is because we know that nothing's going to change. Yeah, but, you know, what do you think about Harris's uh, plan for providing in- increases in for increasing affordable housing, multifamily housing, and giving people significant amount of money for the down payment for their first home? He, she's taken some pretty concrete steps to try to deal with that issue. And Trump isn't. Trump is going to give you the same old crap that he gave you before, a, a big tax cut for the rich and the corporations. I've heard about the housing, buying houses. I re- I did not hear any policy on her with, with the price gouging and rent. I haven't heard any policies on her on even putting a cap on rent. With housing, she talked a lot about it. I saw the interview. I've been paying attention. She said a lot of things about trying to get home ownership up, stuff like that. But we're in an economy where majority of people that are my age are renting and we are being displaced because of how high the rent goes up. To challenge her, I I would like to see her talk more about that as well, too, because it seems like you are at a loss. It's like, what policy is actually for me if I vote for you and you only want people to become homeowners. I can't afford to be a homeowner. My parents were homeowners before. I'm 32 years old. My parents were homeowners before they even turned 30. Before they even turned 25, they were home, homeowners. Yeah. That economy doesn't exist anymore here in 2024. I understand the frustration, how there's the lesser to evil. I, I hate that we have to continue to deal with that same abusive excuse of the lesser to evil. My only issue is that if the Democrats can't pull through what they're doing right now, what will be the excuse after Trump can't run anymore? Like, uh, how, what can they give the people after Trump can't run anymore? When well, you, you get rid of Trump. you get rid of the Republicans in Congress and give the Democrats a Congress that they can work with, and I think you'll see a lot of changes that would be beneficial. I really do. 
It could be, but then we also got to remember that the Democratic Party is also a pro-war party, just like the Republicans are. Like, this whole thing with Israel going on right now, that's under our behest. And I remember Eisenhower, I remember, I don't remember, I read about Eisenhower and Reagan about how they literally called Israel and told them to cut it out. For instance, when Israel invaded Lebanon in the 80s, and Reagan saw that they killed thousands of people within a week he called them and, and told them stop that nonsense mm -hmm. and they stopped mm -hmm. biden can't even put up the the cojones to even call and tell them that mm -hmm. biden is continuing to let them do this because he keeps sending them weapons we are mm -hmm. just as responsible as the israelis are with this with the genocide that's going on and that's a huge movement have you seen what's going on in Deerhorn, michigan biden only one presidency because 100,000 Muslims came out in Deerhorn, Michigan and voted for him. It was a very close race with him between him and Trump. Mm -hmm. And now, you see, I'm in the group chat right now on, on the WhatsApp of a lot of Muslim people constantly calling their Democratic representatives here, mm -hmm. here in Connecticut and here all across the country, especially in Deerhorn, Michigan, and in contact with Rashida Tlaib. And they have a, also abandoned Harris campaign now because of her policies that she has talked about on the media towards Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, America has the ability with a phone call to stop Israel, what they're doing, but they're not. And a lot of their supporters are not appreciating this and becoming one issue voters. And that's why I think the polling is so bad, because what's happening in Palestine is very detrimental to the democratic election. Yeah. Okay. All right. Those are some pretty insightful thoughts, Jamar. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Now, I wanted to ask you what you think about Trump and Vance vilifying immigrants the way they're doing oh, it. Oh, God. Blaming everything on immigrants. No matter what question they're asked, they bring it back to immigrants, whether yeah. it's the economy or what. Um, look, I know people don't like how I get on the Democrats it's, it's so much. I'm telling you, the Republicans are just monsters. In which it, it hurts me the fact that we don't have an alternative that can really stop things because J.D. Vance and I was just watching a interview of Trump. He was on flagrant podcast. And by the way, shouts out to those idiots for not questioning him on anything because he said a lot of lies within mm -hmm. the, whole, the hour and 28 minutes. And they asked him about the immigration thing. And of course, they're like, oh, we're pro keeping our border protected. We're pro keeping illegal people out. We need a better pass, the citizenship, blah, blah, blah. But Trump mm -hmm. also said, okay, we get it. Oh, there's people that want to come to this country that want to work hard. But yeah. we have to work on the criminals. He's automatically going back to, oh, they're all criminals. No, yeah, that's right. Um, that's he, right. He, he, and he lied about the about what, what happened in, in what happened in Springfield. He lied about Springfield, Ohio. Um, oh, yeah, of course. Woman. That, yeah, these that's not even Haitian that was eating the cat. and they just Eating shoot. cats and dogs and people's pets and that. And all that right. kind of stuff. That's just nutty, nutty, yeah. nutty, yeah. And, and, no, it's and very cruel and, and mean. And it's very nutty and it's very destructive. And it's it's like fascism. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. these guys are fascists. Yeah, they um, are. Yeah, we're they going are. to see a police state if they win. We're, I agree a hundred percent. The guy is, and so that brings me back to the question, man. <laughs> you know, know the question. <laughs> What's the question? I gave you my answers. I agree with. I know you did. I know you did. But now you're giving me reasons to change that answer. Now, aren't you? Well, listen, I love your, your gotcha. That was a good gotcha. But you have to understand. <laughs> all right, here's the thing. We already we're already in a genocide with the Palestinians. And if Trump was in office right now, he will give Bibi Netanyahu the absolutely red light to do everything he wants and then will do everything he can in his power to cover it up and make sure it doesn't look so bad on social media. We know that. Trump would do that. Yeah. But the Democrats, they also have the same mentality, but they are ready to lie to you. Political came out with an article last week where the Pentagon, isn't it crazy? The war machine Pentagon was against yeah. Biden because Biden was telling us on the media that he's for a ceasefire while also encouraging that in Yahoo to continue on and to also invade the southern Lebanon region. Yeah. So, of course, they want southern Lebanon to be invaded. Hezbollah right. is an entity that the United States, in their understanding, is a terrorist organization. Not every country 
recognize, by the way, we need to remember not every country recognizes Hamas and Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. Only the countries that the world cares about, like America mm-hmm. and certain European countries, mm-hmm. recognize Hamas and Hezbollah. To, to Eastern people, they see Hezbollah as a resistance because Hezbollah was formed after the PLO was destroyed when Israel invaded Lebanon and literally occupied their land mm-hmm. for a while. So mm-hmm. that's how Hezbollah was created. So mm-hmm. Hezbollah has always had a grudge against Israel, and they kicked them yeah. out in 2006 in the, um, mm-hmm. in the 2006 war. We're seeing the back and forth where the Democrats, they will be like, just don't do it too crazy, but it's the Israelis. They're going to do it too crazy. But we want you to do a ceasefire, but you had this amount of time, like you hear with Blinken, Blinken got in trouble for that. But with the Republicans, yes, it will be a lot more war hawkish than what it is now. I can't sit here and lie and say that it is. But yeah. it's still, we're seeing yeah. two different parties that are okay with the bloodshed. And that bothers me a lot. I understand uh, that. Totally understand that. I do. Yeah. All right. Now, I want to change it. I want to change the subject a little bit. Can yeah. I do that? All right. Okay. All right. Now, we've had a bunch of hurricanes. We had some really bad oh. hurricanes, two of them. And Florida got really whacked. And and now uh, some of the nutcases in the Republican Party, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, mm-hmm. saying that the Democrats can are controlling the weather and sending these hurricanes to the red st- to the red states. What do you think about that? First, I want to give my condolences to. I have some friends in Florida. I'm pretty oh. sure you do too. Everybody knows somebody from Florida. Yeah. Um, and they have no power, and it's bad. My fa- my family, my parents, my my brother, and my parents, they both. My sister as well, too. They live in Asheville, North Carolina. So when uh-huh. Helen hit, they are still without power. They're still without water. Wow, so stuff wow. is getting hit pretty bad right yeah. now. Yeah. And it freaked me out. I spoke to it with you on, a little bit on the email, told you about that. But yeah, Florida is very sad of what's going on. And for her to just take that to drop more conspiracies. Remember, this is the woman that also talked about Jewish satellites. Yeah. I'm in- Zionist. I'm not anti-Jewish. I have a lot of Jewish friends. I don't like anti-Semitic nonsense. Yeah. And she's very anti-Semitic, and now she wants to pretend that she's pro-Israel. Right. And now she's with these conspiracies about how we can create these massive storms, which is clearly because of climate change. Really? It's, it's really and they sad. just, they totally ignore that fact. They deny that fact. They don't ignore it. They deny it. Yeah. Yeah. It's very factual. Whenever Ocasio-Cortez talks about climate change and she brings up these statistics, when you look into what she's talking about, it's actually true. Uh, All right. Tell me, is there anything else you want to mention about the political situation? When we talk about, I I want to stay on the hurricane real quick. I think that's a good thing to talk about because when we look at hurricanes and typhoons, for instance, they're the same thing, but Eastern and Western, so two different names, a different Mm -hmm. dialect. Japan countries like japan they have the infrastructure where they're able to prepare for these storms yeah and they have drain a drainage system for a city so when it floods like that it's easier for it to go down you know what i mean cuba i'm a socialist so i gotta always highlight socialist countries that do things right cuba you why do you not ever hear about disasters in cuba because Cuba has a policy where their National Guard comes in, and when a storm happens, they immediately, first of all, evacuate everyone in the most dangerous parts to the mountains. Okay. And the National Guard comes in, and the National Guard rebuild what was destroyed. Okay. That's their philosophy. And so okay. you see Cuba, Japan, they have these systems in place to deal with the storms. How in the hell is America a leading nation, and we can't deal with a storm like this we can, we, we don't have the money to bring in materials to strengthen our households to strengthen to, first of all to send out materials to working class people so they could put plywood and whatever they need to do to secure right. their homes right. why don't we have a significant drain system we have literally here I, I live across the street from from one of the biggest hospitals in, in um connecticut okay. and we literally here have a drain system here that's so horrible whenever it rains it floods back. Half the street be- gets flooded. So wow. what if wow. hurricane happened? We'll be like Florida, regardless, because we're not in the mountains. We're literally New Haven. I don't know you guys know. New Haven is literally a below sea level. Oh, OK. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Right at the sound. We're right at Long Island Sound. Yeah. So we'll be flooded. We'll be yeah. definitely done. 
Yeah. So that, that's what I want to bring up on that, that we need to hold these politicians accountable to invest more in building and rebuilding our infrastructure. I know it's trillion dollars, but you spent $8 trillion to invade the Middle East and the Taliban is still in power. So I know you got the money to invest in strengthening our cities. <laughs> Jamar, I can't argue with you on that one. I believe I agree with you 100 percent. It's ridiculous. I live in South Carolina and Fortunately, we've been fine with these, at least where I live, in the <laughs> Myrtle Beach area, with mm. these latest storms. But many communities here in our area, especially, I have to say, in the poor communities, mostly African-American communities, where they have not handled the infrastructure the way they need to in order to provide safety from flooding. Now, in the community that I live in, which is a new, fairly new, regular suburban housing development, we have, we, we have, it's amazing to me, when we first moved here, we had a, a Category 3 storm come through, Category 3 hurricane come through, and the next morning, you couldn't even tell it had rained because our drainage is so good. Wow. Um, yeah, it is, it's absolutely amazing. Now, We've had, I've lived here now for eight years, uh, going on eight years, and we've lost, I think, two shingles from hurricanes. We probably had, I don't know, three or four hurricanes during that period of time. Oh, um, wow, that's good. Yeah, and so we've been very fortunate. But not so much in the poor areas, or the, and as I said, many of them are African-American communities that, that just have been ignored. And here locally, the the Democratic Party talks a, a good game when it comes to supporting efforts to help with these kinds of in infrastructure issues. Yeah, they do, but they don't have the clout here because the Republicans control the legislature and they control the purse strings. And there's nothing that really Democratic uh, members of 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 the state legislature can do to shake that loose. And it's just a tough problem. And they focus their efforts on communities that really don't need the help quite as much as some of these poor communities do. And it's just mm. a shame. Mm. Uh, I think it's just a shame. Um, I agree. And I, I want to see, I want to see a, a lot more focus on helping these communities, not just at election time, but all the time. They need to go in there and they need to fix the drainage and they need to fix the roads and all of that kind of thing and just stop talking about it. But they wouldn't even here in this state, they wouldn't even they wouldn't even expand Medicaid when it was offered free money was offered to them through the Affordable Care Act to expand Medicaid. And they refused and they still haven't done it. And a lot of people, thousands of people need Medicaid help and they can't get it. Because and this that. is Nikki Haley state, right? Nikki Haley state. Yep. This is Nikki Haley state. So I, Jamar, I that's what yeah. you get. Well, that's what you get when you vote in such a way that Republicans can win. <laughs> I just have to say that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I still vote Democrat on well, Connecticut level for senators. Yeah, but you said um, you're not going to. You said you're not going to vote for Kamala Harris, which shocks me. Oh no. It, Bob, she's a cop to begin with. <laughs> so what? She's a former prosecutor. That was her job before. So she was a cop. Did she do anything? I trust police. <laughs> what did she do as a prosecutor? Oh, that, she was bad. Why was she bad? That's a different show. Track record as a prosecutor. Don't get me wrong. It's not like she was like Bull Connor back in the days. Uh, I should hope so. <laughs> at all. <laughs> she just made Bull mistakes. Connor back yeah, in the Bull day. Yeah, Bull Connor. You know, I yeah. have to bring up Bull Connor. <laughs> That All was right. a crazy cop, man. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> oh man! All right, but so now, tell me about this media activity. These media activities you got yeah. going on. Tell me about um, that. Yeah, so Jabari Vok Media will be expanding. We have a we have we're going to have three shows, which is also Jabari Vok Podcast behind me. Studio Three A will be the newest show. Would basically be a panel of three black brothers just talking about what's on our minds. It's more or less political. It's more of talking about, because we're wrestling fans, we're sports fans, so we're going to be talking about that okay. uh, on, on the podcast. We're expanding to become a, like a little like a podcast network on Spotify and stuff. Like, it'll still always be on 
the the Jabari Vok street the, the Jabari Vok channel on Spotify and wherever you get your podcast, but it'll be renamed Jabari Vok Media. So you'll have shows like Jabari Vok Podcast. You'll have Unsavory Politique, which Unsavory Politique is different from Jabari Vok Podcast because in Jabari Vok Podcast I cover music, politics, and culture. On Unsavory okay. Politique, I get journalists on, I get historians on. And mm-hmm. we go into the details on these political struggles. We don't just we don't just talk about it on like a political on on a podcast scale. It's more educational. It's more let's get to the bare bone of what the issue is. Uh, okay. Um, All right. What does VOC V O C what does that stand for? Voice of the change. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so three shows on the media platform. So Javari Vok Media, you'll see it on everything. Um please okay. Come on in, share, support. Studio 3A will have its own YouTube channel, Mm -hmm. um, but it will be a part of all the other Jabari Vok Media platforms as well, too. So you'll be updated on that always. That sounds good. That sounds really good. Yeah. All right. Did I tell you about a new book I got coming out? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Can I tell you about that? Yeah, it's the sequel to the two-volume book I did back in 2020 called Hijack Nation, Donald Trump's Attack on America's Greatness. It's got the same title. It's got a different cover. We pick up the story with the insurrection on January 6th of 2021. Crazy day. Yeah. And, and we go forward from there until today, all based on blogs or essays that have been published on my website, leantotheleft.net. So I just wanted to put a plug in for that. And You'll I'm looking be on my for- show too? Yeah, I'm looking forward to being on your show to talk about that. I really am. Yep. I appreciate the invitation okay. uh, very much. All right. We got anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, that's it. Definitely please show support to independent creators like myself and you. Yeah. Definitely to listen to the audience. Definitely this is what's important because you get truthfulness mostly off of the independent stream more than you get from the mainstream now, unfortunately. That's why they don't like us. They don't yeah. like the fact that people have their own shows now. Well, you know what? I don't really care if they like it or not. You, you told me you're 32. Yeah. All right. How old do you think I am, my friend? Maybe 60s. <laughs> I'm 81, pal. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and you're hey, you know what? Office. You're still uh, lucid. You're still getting it done. You're still. Good. I'm getting it done. I'll tell you what. I got a shirt. I got a shirt that I did. It says "Never Quit." Yep. And 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 that's how I feel. My wife keeps ask, asking me, when are you going to retire? I, said, I did retire from a money-making job. I'm not mm-hmm. making any money now doing this podcast. Mm-hmm. But all I'm doing is spending money. But but I feel like it's a good thing to do, and I, I really enjoy it. I get to talk mm-hmm. to people like you, for crying out loud. Yeah. You know yeah. what? It's if, a great if, podcast community. Yeah, it is. It really is. So anyway, thanks so much, Jamar. I appreciate you being on, and, yeah. and I'm looking forward to to being on your show so thank you yeah thank you so much keep fighting everyone hey guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this lean to the left video and you found it interesting and informative please visit on a regular basis and check out our interviews with guests on topics that focus on progressive politics and the important social issues of our time now our interview shows stream on mondays with special episodes on thursdays and follow us on social media, Facebook at Bob Gaddy and the Lean to the Left podcast. Now, it's two. Bob Gaddy is one Facebook page, and the Lean to the Left podcast is a second Facebook page. Twitter at Lean to the Left One, Instagram at Lean to the Left One, TikTok at Lean to the Left, LinkedIn at Bob Gaddy, and YouTube at Lean to the Left. Now, I hope you'll support Lean to the Left as well so we can keep things going. Just click on the Donate tab at the top of the leantotheleft.net homepage and contribute by buying me a cup of coffee. That'll really help and would be much, much, much appreciated. Now, this is Bob Gaddy signing off for Lean to the Left. Thanks for sharing your time with us.